Okay, so um, the very first thing I ever smoked on my smoker that my wife bought me for our anniversary was salmon. I've done it, I think, once since then. And I think I did some trout I caught once. So it's not something we do very often. So we're gonna smoke up some salmon on the, uh, on the Weber. Uh, we got this at Sam's Club. Uh, it's got the skin on because it's $2 cheaper a pound if you get it with the skin on. Um, and really what I found the past times I've done this is that the skin actually just kind of comes off after you cook it. So it's, I, I'm not even going to deal with anything. We're just going to prepare it and um, cook it and go from there. So there's a couple of different ways to do salmon. I'll talk as I kind of get this set up. You can do what I'll call uh, appetizer salmon. That's typically the kind, say, that you put on bagels or crackers. Um, and that tends to be, for lack of a better term, overcooked. You don't really worry about hitting a specific temperature. You're not looking for really nice moist meat. You're just looking for the dried salmon that tastes, you know, that has the nice salmon flavor. So we're doing this like we drop it in the oven and, and cook a fish fillet. Um, and so there's there's a number of different ways to do this. You could literally just throw that in the smoker, put some you know put some smoke on it for about an hour, and it'd be really delicious. Um, you can do wet wet brines. You can do dry brines. I'm going to do a dry brine. I've done this a couple of different ways. The first time I did it, I put the dry brine on, I left it overnight. Um, and you get really, you know, really sucks the moisture out. And so you're starting to kind of get into that appetizer or salmon territory if you do it that way. So we're just gonna do this for a couple of hours. Uh, so what I have here is uh, the, very, the very basic one of these is a cup of salt and a cup of brown sugar. Um, this is a little more it's a cup of salt, cup of brown sugar, tablespoon of granulated garlic, a tablespoon of dill, and a teaspoon of tarragon. Um, just whatever you think would taste good on salmon, that, that's, what you're, that's what you would use. Um, and so I'm gonna, can you give me a spoon, I'm sorry. I'm gonna put a bed of this down for the salmon to lay on and then we'll put the, the filet down and then coat the rest of the fish with it. Um, you could rinse this off if you wanted to. You could pat it dry if you wanted to. We're gonna rinse it after the brining process. The salt is going to soak up moisture, so that's why I don't really worry too much about it at this stage. Um, now the way I'm going to do this is this is the only thing I'm putting on the fish. Um, you can absolutely set some of this aside and then right before you put it in the smoker reapply it for flavoring like a rub. Um, I, I like the flavor of the fish. And even though we're gonna rinse this off of the fish before we put it in the smoker, this flavor is still gonna be imparted. If it wasn't, there would well, you would only use salt. We're gonna try to wrap it. Okay, so you apply the brine, the dry brine, the rub, whatever you wanna call it. This is a brine. Um, so I guess you can, it would be appropriate to call it that. I probably could have thought that out a little better and prepared this to make it easier on myself, but it'll be fine. The trick is going to be not to make a mess and have my wife that said to me. <laughs> that's, that's how I live my life. Yeah. Pay attention, guys. That's the key to happiness right there. Your wife not being upset at you? Yeah. I was going to say, you should see the, me the messes I make when I cook. I yes, but they're your messes. That's true. So you can see how when you wrap it, it, um, it, it gets the brine 
it gets the brine on the sides. So back in the pan? I'm gonna, yeah, it's gonna go in, it's gonna go in a pan. If you, if you don't put it in a vessel, it's gonna make a mess. And it's gross, nasty fish mess at that, so. So I just wanna shore up that, the sides just a little bit. There. Um, you know, really, you wouldn't even have to wrap it. You could just put it in the pan and uh, and let it, you know, let it rest in the seasoning. It 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 doesn't, you know, you can do it a, a couple of different ways. Again, I don't really want that leaking. So there, you know, and 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 again, it's not critical that you have full coverage. This is totally fine. Um, it's going to pull the moisture out and and uh, and do what it's supposed to do in its current form. So this goes in the fridge for two to four hours. You can do it overnight if you wanted to, um, but we're going to pull it at about probably the my guess is the four hour mark, and then we'll we'll go from there. So it's been what three hours. Well, Maybe three, three and a half. Three and a half, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off now. I had originally said there was going to be a bunch of liquid in here, and that was based off of my last time doing this when it was overnight. But you can see just the color of the, you know, the mix. There's a ton of moisture in there. It's just not been long enough to, to, to seep out. I mean, you can see, I guess it is there. You can see the liquid coming out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unwrap this and um, rinse off the sand. Okay, so just got done rinsing it, and you can see the dill still on there, and that's totally fine. Um, and I think I mentioned it before, I don't put any more seasoning on when I smoke it because the, the fish is going to be flavorful enough, and this is part of the reason because it still has, you know, the residual brine on it. Um, the other thing to notice is that it's it's a much a richer color now, and so that brine is is you know changing the you know changing the color of the fish. So you can see the, the changes. You can actually see them um, from the brine. You'll have to edit that, of course, because I sound like an idiot. <laughs> you can leave that in if you want to. I usually don't edit you too much, to be honest. So I'm just going to make sure it's dry. Get, you know, get a little more of that brine off of it. What we're going to do now is we're going to put it back in the fridge for at least a half an hour. Um, when we pull that out, I will give the reasoning for that. Okay, so pull out of the fridge. It's actually been probably closer to an hour. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's kind of it's kind of tacky. This the surface is a little dried out, it's a little tacky. That's called pellicle. Pellicle. Um, it's just proteins in the in the meat that come out and it protects, it's a protective coating that keeps the, the meat from drying out. I assume that's some sort of thing with a live fish too. Um, but so what that's gonna do, again, is because it keeps the moisture in, that makes it really nice for smoking, and then the smoke really sticks to the pellicle, uh, so you get a nice smoke flavor on there in a really short amount of time. This is about three and a half pounds. Um, I'm gonna just put it in for an hour and see what happens. Um, if you go over a little bit, you have some appetizer salmon and some dinner salmon, and if you hit it right on, then you know that's 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 what you want. So we're gonna go put it on the smoker now. Okay, so I have uh, I have water in the pan to help keep the temperature down to add moisture. I've got uh, pecan wood, which if you watched any of these videos, you know I I prefer pecan wood. Um, you're you're wanting to be too. 225 to 250. Like I said, I'm gonna do it for about an hour. Um, it's really hard on this thing to get lower temperatures, so I might have to cook a little higher. Uh, but I'm shooting for uh, 235 is what I'm hoping for. Again, I'm gonna check it in an hour. You can see the smoke's really going now. It smells real good. It's gonna taste real good. I'm excited. So spell. So this has been on for 45 minutes. Um, it's 130 degrees. You need to hit at least 125. Um, so it's it's ready to come out. That was in the thick part. Um, this white stuff, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's just part of cooking fish. It's the proteins that are getting 
uh, pushed out of the muscle as the fibers tighten. You just wipe it off, scrape it off. It's, it's not anything, I mean it looks gross, but it's not gross. It's just part of the deal. Um, so that looks awesome to me. I'm excited. All right. So we'll get this uh, we'll get this brought inside and we'll open it up and look at it. So I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know how to cut fish, you know. So let me just cut it across here. I'm sure there's people out there going, "Oh, heathen, for cutting it that way." I'm sure. Okay, and I want to. There we go. So look at, I mean, look at how light and flaky that is. You can tell it's nice and moist, it's not dried out, it's actually cooked. Doesn't that right. look good? Oh yeah, it looks really good. Oh, it's so good. How's that? So the first time, well, the, the last couple times I've cooked this, I did not use pecan or pecan <laughs> or pecan. Um, that is wonderful. I, I mean, you know, if you guys have watched these, you know that I just do pecan wood now. Mm. Um, and it, I mean, it, it is awesome on the salmon. Um, I have no idea if this had bones. If it did, they're I would assume dissolved. It, it does, did, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, if memory serves, and I think I said this when we were preparing it, Yep, the skin just slides right off there. Probably should have just done that. I was going to say, and Bella would probably like a piece of that skin. Of course, this is the part that's ah, curved. So, you know, I thought about filleting it before I cooked it. No reason to. No reason to. It just comes right off. And I'm <laughs> sure that would be the case, too, if it was cooked in the oven, but... Um, and you save yourself two bucks a pound. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I thought about getting the skinless. It's like, no, I'm not gonna do it. You're gonna give the whole thing to her? <laughs> Don't burn her little mouth. Oh no. <laughs> well. So anyway, that is uh, smoked salmon on the Weber bullet, the Weber Smoky Mountain. Um, I remember this is, uh, it's awesome in salads. Oh yeah, we used to put this in salads mm -hmm. quite a bit. We're going to have it with a salad tonight, but, um, so the points on this are three points per three ounces. So that right there is three ounces, which again is not a whole lot. So I would say we'd probably double that for a, a serving, but even still, not too bad. Salmon's great for you as far as health benefits, so, and it tastes amazing. So, that is smoked salmon. You already said that. Yeah. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one. And as we're eating this, I wanted to mention, I do realize this has a rub on it, so, that can definitely affect the points, but I didn't really factor it in because of the fact that you basically wash pretty much all of that off, right? Some of it's gonna get um, obviously absorbed into the meat, but most of it gets washed off. And so I guess if you wanted to add points for that, I would say add an extra point per Four ounces. For, yeah, per yeah. four ounces or so. But yeah, I went and looked again at the Weight Watcher app, and this is basically a point an ounce, as is. So I just did want to mention that. I had forgotten all about the fact that this had a rub on it. But again, I don't think that that's going to affect you too much. But at a point, if you want to uh, factor that in too.